So I'm here in downtown Los Angeles. Not a city that I'm a big fan of, but I'm here anyways. This is my setup. I have the Sony Alpha 1. Got a different lens today. We have the 16 to 35 Sony Zeiss lens. And the reason for that is because I actually need a really wide lens. If you come back and look at this angle here, to get this framing, I needed the 16. I was going to use the 21, but it's a smidge too tight, which is unfortunate because I would have preferred to use the 21 millimeter. So that's the composition that I'm framing right now. I haven't bust, bust out my filters yet, but I will do so eventually as the sun goes down a little bit more, the building lights start coming on and it'll just look really nice, especially with this wonderful LA traffic that will make some nice long exposure streaks in the image. I ended up backing up a bit. I was a little bit like right there and I've backed it up a bit. So now I'm catching this roadway as cars come up here and then also this part of the interstate. And so it's a little bit wider. So because of that, so if we come into what a 21 would give me, that's where the 21 would be. And that's not bad. So I have my other camera body with the 21 already locked and loaded, ready to go. So if I need to switch lenses, all I have to do is just switch the camera bodies. So that's one of the reasons why I ended up buying a second Sony A1. For situations like this, where I don't have to change a lens, I can just switch the cameras all together. And I don't have a different camera, they're both the same, so I'm not having to worry about, you know, shooting with the A9, which is a 24 megapixel camera, as opposed to 50 megapixels of the Sony A1. So just take off the camera and keep it going. So we're gonna go in here and switch camera bodies. So as you can see, I already got the 21 ready. So got the camera body switched and that's the framing with the 21. Uh, as I see it up there, I think it's okay. But I do like the ultra wide with the 16. So, hmm, we might be doing a little mixing and matching today, I can see. I ended up keeping the 21 for a bit and I threw on some filters. So on the front, that is my Haida six stop ND filter. And what I'm using that for is, if you look at the traffic here, you see it's slow moving, but it's not as fast as this lane over here. Because of that, I have to use a longer shutter speed to get them to show the, the movement. This side, it's kind of gonna eliminate the motion just because they're going a little bit faster. Right now I'm at about an F11. My shutter speed is a 3.2 second and ISO is 100. Now watch what happens. So I'm on a two second timer. And um, look at that. So see how the motion is there? So down at the bottom, that lane of the expressway, basically the, the motion is eliminated. But on that outside line, you see how we got the, the movement because they're moving so slow. That's why it looks like that. That's a very good physics lesson right here to determine what kind of shutter speed you would need because you have two totally different flows of traffic going on here. So to show some movement of this lane, you have to go a lot longer. But in doing so, because they're moving faster, you see how the, the cars are eliminated here just because they're going faster during that exposure. So great little physics lesson for you all. So I'm gonna do some shooting. I'm gonna probably put on my little body cam setup so that way you all can see while I'm shooting and I don't have to hold the camera because it'll be a little bit easier for me. So we'll see what we get and I'm excited. The conditions, they still look good. Sunset's gonna look beautiful. I think we're gonna get some nice colors and I'm excited for that. Remember earlier I was talking about the traffic but you see how this row on that outside lane is now moving steadily as the inside lane because of that now i can have a shutter speed that actually matches both sides and we'll get the same kind of movement in the frame right now i'm at four seconds we're actually going to change that by adjusting my iso 
and going to ISO 200. So now we're at two seconds because we don't need as long of a shutter speed as we did before. So when we review that, see how we're, it's still a little too long. So let's drop our aperture a third. Uh, let's, let's go maybe two thirds. So we'll do F9, maybe go to 250 on the ISO. So now we're at a second and we'll take that. And that's pretty good. That's pretty good. If we want to bring in some more, we can. So let's go to ISO 400. Oh, now we're now we're cooking with grease right here. So I'm going to switch and now get some horizontal. So with the 21, as you can see, it's a little bit tighter. And I don't know. Oh, that's still pretty good. That's still pretty good. I think that'll work because we're, we're, we don't want to clip too much off the building here. So let's make sure everything's level so that way I don't have to alter the leveling in post and then maybe clip off part of the building up there. But I still want to see the express down there. So that looks good. So we're only at about 0.6 of a second, two second timer. Let's see, did that take? Yes, it did. Oh, that is beautiful. Gosh, that's a gorgeous shot. Let's take another. We're still using our six stop um, ND filter. So now we're, we're in the money. We're cooking with grease now because we, we got that shutter speed set just perfectly. So if we come around here, see, yep, that's the six stop. You know, my tripod set up here. Now what I'm doing is walking down because I want to get more of a center shot on this center uh, median with the traffic. So we're going to set up right here and take this composition. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Now we've gotten into that twilight sort of zone where you got the nice colors and the building lights are starting to come on. It's very different from where we started earlier to where things are now, because now I can really get some, uh, sort of a lot of different colors going on here. Now, unfortunately, the cloud cover is not as significant as I would hope, but it still does a little bit of justice to our photo here. I'm actually still on the 21 millimeter lens. I've taken off the filters though, because now I've gotten into the range where I actually don't need the filters. I can just rely on camera settings for getting the, the shutter speed that I need. The last time I ever shot this was in 2016. So it has been, what is it? Six years since I've been here. And my equipment definitely is a lot changed now. And I've wanted to get this shot again for years. Because back then I still had the original A7 and I was shooting with a 10 to 18, which is a crop lens, but it actually worked between 12 and 18 on the full frame. But I wanted to come back, actually have a full frame camera, have good glass and definitely much improved over the six year old image of this skyline shot. Previously, I happened to capture some really amazing images of the downtown Los Angeles skyline at sunset. And I thought I would bring you into Adobe Lightroom Classic and we go through together and see what kind of edit can we add to this image to really bring it out even further. As always, I am using Adobe Lightroom, but if you're someone that utilizes any other program of your choosing, you can follow along to this as well. Remember, it's not about the program that you're using, but how you use that program to bring out what you've visualized creatively 
to your images. So with that said, let's get right into Lightroom Classic. Now, the first thing that I generally like to do for my images is change my profile. So for this profile, we're actually going to select Modern 7. And as you can see, it sort of warms up our image a bit. And then it also adds a little bit of a deeper contrast to it. Now, some people choose to do this afterwards. Depending on how I feel, I may add this in the middle, start with it, or apply it at the end. Totally up to you. So now that we have that selected, let's do some adjustments of our white balance. Sort of what I see here is an image that has a lot of warmth, but it doesn't lose sort of the cooler feel or cooler tones. Let's start off and go with something a little bit warmer to, to get us going. I want to go to about 7,500 for my temperature. And that warmed it up quite a bit. And for our tint, let's lose some of the purple and go more towards our green. I want to go a little bit, a little bit of an increase in our exposure. We can brighten up the image a bit, just doing that. As you can see, it really added a little bit more light there. Now for our highlights, we're going to decrease this. And as we do that, you can kind of see over in our cloud area, we're bringing some of that detail back to where you can see more of the, the defining lines with our clouds. Next, I want to increase my shadows. So we're going to bring up the con or the shadows quite a bit here. And we'll also increase our white level. And that just brightens up the image because since I decreased my highlights, I wanted to add that light back that we took away by bringing in the white level. Now for our black level, I definitely said I want to have some contrast. So see how we got that back by decreasing that. And I typically do that. If I go up in my shadows, I'll come down with my black level. And that's how I, I get that contrast back. Next, we'll add in some texture here and we'll do some clarity. And because we really want these buildings to, to pop, especially along the edges, we're going to add quite a bit to the clarity. And then we'll add a little bit in the dehazing because that gives us a little bit more contrast as well. I said that I really want a nice, rich, also vibrant image. So contrary to some of the other images that I have, we're actually increasing our saturation here. And that looks really good, not by much, but we want a little bit of an increase because we want those colors because there's so many beautiful colors here. Look at these colors, they're just gorgeous just beautiful colors. And we want that to really show in our image. And now that we've done that, we'll come down to our tone curve. One of my favorite features within Lightroom is adjusting my tone curve. So we'll actually come over here to where I can change to one of the presets that I have for my point curve. And we're, we're wanting to have something really strong. So we'll use my skyline curve strong and just look at how saturated that is, very saturated. Now we'll come back to where we can do some of our adjustments in the parametric curve. And I'm just gonna bring down this line for in our shadow region and increase this area here. And then next of what I want to do here is bring down a little bit in the lights, bring up the darks a bit, and then we'll also increase our shadows significantly here. And look at that. Oh, that's looking so beautiful. Now here comes the fun part where we start manipulating these colors that we have. So I want our red to kind of pop. I want like a ruby red. So let's bring our red a little bit further down on our hue. Also, same for our orange. I want them a little bit more reddish orange going on in the photo. So we'll bring this down quite a bit. Yellow, I want more on the orange spectrum. So we'll bring this down. That looks great. And then for our greens, we want them to be a little bit more green. So let's bring that more towards the right here. And we'll have maybe a little bit more, maybe a blue, maybe have a little blue into our aqua. That looks good. That looks really good. Let's go a little bit more blue for our blue as well. And that looks great. So see, look at these colors. And I, I feel like I actually wanna go a little bit further on the aqua, let's let's do that. So you kind of see what's, what's changing here when I adjust my aqua. So let's go a little bit more over, I think. Yeah, let's do this. That looks great, that looks great. But we'll do a little bit in our purple, maybe go more towards where it's a little bit more red in in our purple hue so we'll go to the right here not by much 
And then for our magenta, same thing. And that looks pretty good. Let's take those colors and let's make certain colors stand out a little bit more. So let's just have fun with this. Let's add a little bit in our saturation for the red. A lot for our orange. Oh, that's that's looking great. We'll go up in our yellow as well. Same with our green. So we're, we're increasing saturation for a lot of colors here. And we won't touch our aqua, that's fine. For our blue, we'll actually decrease this a bit and we'll increase the purple. Okay, and that's looking really good. So next for our luminance, let's make some of those colors kind of pop a little bit more like our red, but then we'll bring down the yellow. We'll also bring down purples and magentas. Let's maybe bring our orange down a smidge. Okay. And then let's increase the luminance of our green as well as our blue. Now next we'll come down to my favorite, color grading. Normally with color grading, I do a lot of adjustments here, but for this photo, we actually won't, I don't think I'm going to do a lot. What I'm going to do is select just the highlights. We're just gonna alter our, hi our highlights here. Let's add a little bit of warmth. So we'll go into our more warmer spectrum here and add our saturation in. And that looks really good. Now let's change the blending. So I wanted to sort of act the way that split toning did. So we'll adjust our blending and take this all the way to 100. And then let's decrease the balance a little bit on this photo as well. And that looks good. That looks pretty good right there. So next for our detail, we'll just add some more sharpness. I just love really, really sharp images. I mean, this photo is already, I mean, look at this. 50 megapixels, it's just beautiful. Just beautiful. And once we've done that, we'll run our lens correction, select our Zeiss E-mount lens. There's our Loxia lens, but then we'll bring down the vignetting a bit to 85. Let's go to our effects panel and then we'll add on our vignette. You, you know I have to do this. It's, it's always customary to do this. But here's what we're going to change though. We're going to change the style from highlight priority and we'll go to color. Before I do that, let me show you what the adjustment will look like. We, we want to really bring this in. That looks good. Bring our midpoint down. Bring our highlights up though. And we'll change the, the feather of this and go to 100. And change our roundness a bit to about 20. Now, as you can see with the highlight priority, our image is, is really dark. And I don't want that, but I do want where we sort of have this softening of the light on the edges. And so what I'm gonna do is select color priority and watch what happens. That's a big difference, isn't it? Very big difference. So that's why we're using the color priority. So we've done that and I'll run a little bit of desaturation in our calibration here for our green primary. And then I'll also do that for the blue. Once we've done that, I'm gonna, going to come back to the top because there's something else that I want to do. And that is adjust with the masking. The new masking tool has been such an advantage to have. And so I want to do some selective adjustments. So let's select our sky and look at how, how quick that is. That's one reason why I got this MacBook Pro. It's just so snappy and so smooth that I, I got swindled. I, that's basically it. I got swindled by Jason Vaughn. And what I wanna do is bring in the clarity a bit. And once we've done that, we'll bring in some black level. And that looks really good. Then I wanna do another mask. And um, let's, let's rename this really quickly. So we'll do sky select. So that way I know what it is. And now let's create a new mask. And I wanna do a select subject. And so I want to select the buildings and good, it saw the buildings. So we don't have to worry about you know, brushing in anything because that's exactly what I wanted. What I want to do for the buildings is bring up the shadows. So let's bring those up even more. Really good because I, I just want to make sure we have that light in some of those darker regions of our buildings because I just want it to pop even further. So once we've done that, that looks pretty good. I think we're, we're done for the Lightroom part. I'm going to export this and then shoot it over into Photoshop, do some final adjustments there and we're good to go. 
So I've exported my image from Lightroom Classic and we're now here in Adobe Photoshop. And we're just gonna do some final adjustments, you know, like adding my favorite, my little lens flare. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's go up here to where it says filter and we're going to select our render and come to lens flare. And you just position this wherever you feel like the lens flare should go. Where I like to position this is in the brightest part of the photo, because then it's it's not as obvious that we've added that. And it, it just sort of fits. It just adds a nice little sort of pop of light. And then with this 50 to 300 zoom lens type, it has a nice color effect with this flare. So it's just gonna add to the to vibrancy and the colors that we have here. So we're gonna position this maybe on this side, or we could come in to this inner part here, but you choose, what do you feel? I wanna put it on this side here on the outer edge. And then you can control your brightness. Do I want it a little darker? Do I wanna have it super bright? You choose, what do you feel about it? I, I think I like about 90, 90 or so percent. And that looks good. So once we've done that, we're gonna undo it. And then we're going to add in a fill layer. So let's come to layer, new fill layer, solid color, and you wanna make sure that your fill color is black. So once we've done that, we're going to do our shortcut. So you can either come back up to filter and select lens flare, and that will recall your adjustment here, or you can just do the shortcut, command, control, and F, there you go. See, I'm already getting familiar with the shortcuts on a Mac, who knew? So we'll come down and we wanna run a Gaussian blur. And 70%, it looks pretty good let's keep it now once we've done that we'll come over to our layers panel and with that layer selected we're going to select the drop down selection where it has normal and we want to go to screen and then once we've done that you can choose to adjust the opacity do you still want it to be that strong or do you want to kind of bring it down a bit and so for this photo let's maybe bring it to 80 percent i know a lot of people who use photoshop they like to work within the different layers but I actually choose to just flatten the image. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm gonna right click my background layer and then do flatten image. So now everything's together. So now I wanna run some additional level and curve adjustments. Yes, we did that in, in Lightroom Classic, but I also like doing it again once I brought an image into Photoshop because what that does is give me a little bit more of a push in that contrast. It just, just gives me a little bit more of a bump. I'm gonna do Command and L, that brings up our levels. And then I have all these preset options already. So we're going to select my custom six because I like the contrast level here. And then we'll do control, a Command M and run a curve adjustment. Three looks pretty good. Let's see, let's maybe check two. Actually, I like two better. It's not as, as much, it's not as harsh. So once we've done that, I'm gonna select my dodge tool here and let's supersize this brush a bit. Let's go to 1800. And then let's just hover over some of our buildings. Oh, that was a little bright, I actually saw that. Let's bring the exposure down there. And let's just bring out some more light in some of the regions of this image. Just make it pop a little bit more, that's it. You choose, what do you want to do? How, how, do, how much brighter do you want it to be? It's your choice. You make it how you want. We're just having fun here. And then I also maybe do my highlights here. Let's, let's bring this up here. Look at how we're bringing that in. Isn't that beautiful? And just how much you choose, how much you feel. That's it. Oh, that's beautiful. All right. And then we have ourselves a final image there. I think it's beautiful. Hopefully that kind of gave you a little insight to how I go about editing my photos. And you know, we just, it just depends on what I feel. So see how we added that warmth, but it still has the underlying cool tones in the photo too, because I didn't want to lose that. That was very important to me. And then we just add all this rich color. It just is a magnif magnificent photo. And I just absolutely love this image. So hopefully something that you saw here in the editing portion, something that you can try for any of your photos that you have of your cityscape. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you look for more of my videos to come. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video.